In this video, I'm going to take a look at the CLK63 AMG Coupe, which at the moment is likely the only one in North America, as it was never originally sold here. Thanks to Winding Road Motor Cars in Langley, British Columbia, for inviting me to have a look at their CLK63. I'll leave a link below to their website for more details. So this 2007 model was sold new in Japan and was recently imported to Canada. Cars from Japan have to be at least 15 years old to be eligible for import to Canada. These 63 coupes were never originally sold here in Canada or the US. The convertible version was sold here and additionally the Black Series was brought to the US for 2008. Under the hood is the M156 engine. Here it's rated at 475 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. The only difference between this and the North American spec is that the air boxes are different and they don't have the extra charcoal filters which are supposed to catch any emissions from the intake manifold. Although having the different air boxes are not really going to make any noticeable difference to performance. This is a very smooth running V8 as I've always said about the M156. The 209 was the chassis used to prototype this engine, so it fits well into this relatively small car. A 7-speed transmission is used in this car as well as a 2.65 rear axle ratio. The brakes are 6-piston up front with 14.2-inch discs. The coupe weighs in at 3,870 pounds, compared to 4,130 of the convertible. So about 260 pounds difference between the two. Of course, the other difference than the roof with the coupe is that it was fitted with the quad exhaust outlets compared to the dual tips on the convertible. Looking underneath, the floor is quite different between the two. But as we can see, the exhaust still flows from one pipe on both cars before it splits off after the rear axle on the coupe. So in the end, the sound is quite similar. However, the look of the quad outlets is more balanced for sure. Looking at the production numbers, this coupe is a very rare car. 1,181 units were made in total, so just slightly more than the 1,119 convertibles. The exterior styling is really highlighted by the pillarless design. When all the windows are down, it really gives the car a distinctive look. Since this is a Japanese market CLK, you'll notice that there are no amber side markers. You'll also notice a hazard triangle carried in the trunk that you wouldn't see on a North American market car. Power folding mirrors are another unique feature. This car is Japan spec, but it's left-hand drive. Apparently it was desirable to own expensive foreign cars like AMG CLKs with left-hand drive in Japan. It's funny to me because they made this car with a right-hand drive version. Inside there are also a few differences you will notice when compared to a North American CLK, such as the solid armrest instead of the sliding one. This particular example is finished in Designo Diamond White with black Nappa leather inside. In terms of options, this car is equipped with the power rear sunshade, parking sensors, and the curve illuminating xenon lights. I also see a stock on the right side of the steering column and this is to control the Linguatronic voice control. And I believe most of these, if not all of them, were equipped with a sunroof. These illuminated door sills are an OEM accessory that was added to this car. Aftermarket head units were super common in Japan, but I would personally return it to a stock unit. Overall, this example is very clean and it has only around 83,000 kilometers. Let's take it for a quick drive. I was interested to see how it drove compared to my convertible. A few observations are that you can feel the car is a bit lighter and also that the ride quality is a bit better. 
This is not surprising as the chassis is stiffer on the coupe compared to the convertible. And in rainy conditions, you can barely get on the throttle because you don't have much traction. Two 5.5 tires with nearly 500 horsepower is always fun. Overall, this is a very pleasant car to drive. It's interesting that they never sold these in North America. Who knows what the exact reason was. Either way, it was cool to see one of these in person and take a look around this car. Many compare this car to the W204 C63, which was powered by the same engine. While the 204 is more modern, I can still appreciate the rarity of this car and that classic pillarless design. If you want to see more on the W209 AMGs, I made a buyer's guide last year and I'll leave a link down below to that. Thanks for watching. If you want to support the channel, take a look at my store. Link to it is in the description. If you want to see more Mercedes and AMG content, subscribe for more videos like this one.